time for some few short ribs. Get these unwrapped and we'll start trimming them up. You're going to want to remove the fat cap on the outside because there's some tough silver skin underneath. And you can take a look at this meat and see just how much fat is on the inside. So you're not going to miss that fat cap. It's going to prevent the smoke from penetrating and your seasoning from penetrating. So just take your time with your knife and slice with the knife pointing upwards. This will prevent you from taking off too much of that meat. Definitely don't want to slice off any of the lean meat. Don't worry about that fat. We're not going to let it go to waste. We'll do something with that later on. Stay tuned. Again, look at all that marbling. You're definitely not going to be missing any of this fat cap. What you will notice is on the smaller side, there's a deep pocket of fat, which you're not going to be able to remove. Just thin it up a little bit and leave it. Check over the back quick. Take off any loose, hard fat on the back. I like to always be feeling with my hands and seeing if we missed anything. Just work your way around a couple times. Make sure you don't miss it. Look at that. There's that fat I was talking about again. One more little piece. That's good. Now, time to season. Get yourself on these big plastic meat lugs. This will save a mess. I like to go with a little bit of Worcestershire sauce. I don't think you really need a binder, but I think the Worcestershire sauce adds quite a bit of umami flavor and a little bit of extra saltiness and just a touch of sweetness. Now we're going in with some Redmond's Real Salt because the main seasoning is going to be Crave's Chili Joe. This is a low sodium rub, so that's why I'm adding a little bit of extra salt. Go ahead and be generous with this. This is a coffee and chili rub. Not too spicy, but so much flavor. It is just amazing on beef. Put this in the fridge, and then the next day, we'll start up. Going to let these rest for 24 hours in the fridge and let that seasoning soak in. Time to fire up the Lone Star Grills and Slave Mini. Of course, we're burning Jealous Devil. I got chunks in this chimney. That's what we're going to use to get it going. I already loaded the charcoal basket with a mixture of chunks and max briquettes and oak wood for flavor. Time for a boom fire starter to get this going. Hands are a little bit dirty, but sometimes it's dirty work making barbecue. Going to set this right underneath that chimney. Then we're going to shut the door. By doing it this way, we're going to use that heat of the charcoal getting going to preheat the Lone Star Grills. This will cut your heating time down a lot on this smoker. This is a beast of a smoker. It takes a long time to get going, but once it's up to temperature, it's going to ride nice and steady. You're going to remove this smoke controller I got from Inkbird. Open up the vents. All right, it's been about 15 minutes. This chimney is ripping. Time to go ahead and get it dumped on top of the charcoal. I already got in the basket down there. There you go. You can see that mixture of charcoal, briquettes, and lump. I'm going to try to pour this out nice and carefully. I don't want to spill any hot coals on my deck. Definitely need a good pair of barbecue gloves for this job. This charcoal is hot. Okay, going to go ahead and get this out of the way. All right, check out this fire controller from Inkbird. You can see as I turn it on and off how quickly the fan responds. Hopefully you can hear it. The app for this is really simple. This is my first cook with this smoke controller from Inkbird. So we'll see how it goes. But like I said so far, I'm really loving the app. I made this adapter myself. It came with one for a Kamado and I made it work on the Lone Star Grills. I'm going to start off with that bottom vent all the way open and the top vent all the way open. Don't forget to put in your pit probe thermometer. I like to hook mine on the bottom of the rack. This way I can still put the meat on the top side of the rack. Okay, it's getting close to temperature now. We're going to close down the top vent three quarters of the way and the bottom vent three quarters of the way. Now we're going to get the water in there. I like to let it get to my target temperature, in this case 225. Then we'll add one gallon of water. Just take your time and add it. Okay, let's get these meat probes hooked up. This can run up to four probes, one pit and three meat probes. I'm only going to use two today. All right, there's that uh, trimmings I talked about. We're going to go ahead and render this down and make some smoked beef tallow to finish these ribs with. All we're going to do is get all this loaded into the Lone Star Grills, and then we're going to bed. 
We're going to let this smoke all night. This is my favorite way to smoke most meats because you're not waiting around for them to get done while the family's getting hungry. When everyone's ready to eat, they'll be ready. I'm going to put one rack on each rack in the smoker, spread them out. We could put quite a few more racks in if we wanted to, but I only got three racks cooked today. I'm going to get the meat probes in. When you put them in, you're going to want to try to slide them right in between the bones. Just make sure you're not touching a bone or too close to the surface. You want to get it right in the middle to get accurate temperature. All right, we'll check back in the morning. Here we are the next morning, about 6 a.m. These ribs are sitting at around 185 degrees. I'm gonna check them with my thermometer, but I'm not really worried about the temperature here. I'm just going for feel. Of course, you know by now, you want these to be nice and tender. You want them to feel like soft butter or maybe some peanut butter, nice and jello-like. These are almost there. We're gonna go ahead and wrap them now. We're gonna put that smoked towel we made in the wrap, get all three of them out. Okay, now here we go with the smoke towel. Look at that liquid gold. Pour that on top, be generous, don't be scared. That's all flavor, nothing wrong with a little bit of beef fat. Get the nice coat on all of these. When you wrap these, you really gotta be careful because the bones will easily tear at your tinfoil and you'll lose all that precious juice. Just be really careful. I'm going meat side down. This way the meat can soak in all that tallow and soak up some of that fatty goodness. I'm going to put these back on the smoker in a foil pan just in case we do have a puncture in that foil. While I get the rest of these wrapped up, make sure you give me a thumbs up, subscribe. You can hit that bell, turn on notifications. And as soon as this video is over, head on over to Instagram and give me a follow at Lamb. I'm always posting cooks over there. Okay, we got them all back on the smoker now. Let me go ahead and shut the door. Let these go for an hour or so. Once they're completely cooked, probe tender, probably somewhere around 195 to 200 degrees. I never really did look at the temperature. We're gonna go ahead and take these out of the foil and put them right in the foil pan, meat side up this time. And we're not going to lose any of that precious tallow. We're going to put all that back in the pan and put some on top of the ribs. Kind of got to smush them a little bit or stretch the pan out to get them to fit in there. Those bones are pretty big. Now we're going to go in with a little bit of beef broth. And then we're going to cover them back up with foil. These are done cooking now. We just want to make sure everything stays nice and moist. Because it's only about 9 o'clock in the morning and we're not eating until 4 or 5 o'clock tonight. I'm going to put these back in the smoker. But you could probably put these in a cooler or a warm oven. Now, while these rest, let's make some barbecue sauce. I'm not big on barbecue sauce, but a little bit, I think it's gonna be nice. Going in with some sweet baby rays, sweet and spicy, no sugar added. Then I'm gonna add some high quality apple cider vinegar because I don't like my barbecue sauce that spicy. I like a good tang. And then to give it a little bit more flavor, I'm going with Ancho Love from Crave which is a Southwest or like a taco kind of seasoning. A nice blend of chilies, a little bit of cilantro and cumin in there. Give it a good shake. Shake, shake, shake. There you go, ready. Let this hang out until we're ready to eat. All right, now it's time for what we've been waiting for all day. Let's get these beef ribs sliced. Look at that. Nice bark on there. It's gotten a little bit soft, but it's still delicious. All right, cut into this and see what kind of smoke ring we got. Look at that smoke ring. Look at that. So juicy, so tender. Look at the juice running out of there. We're not squeezing that, though. Going to have to do a little taste test to make sure it's good. Trust me, it was. Now we're making these into tacos on a stick. I think this is my favorite way to eat beef barbecue. Just a little bit of that barbecue sauce, not too much. Next, going in with some pickled jalapeno slices. Be generous with these, they're not too spicy. Lots of flavor, pile them on there, I love them. And then to balance everything out, a little bit of sour cream, or maybe a lot of sour cream. Focus, focus, there it is, look at that. Look at that perfection. Are you ready? You gotta take a big bite on this one. Who's joining me for this bite? Let's go. 
This was amazing.